Marines are different. They like to think they're the best. Their culture is a warrior spirit. We consider ourselves warriors, that we have an obligation to be the most ready when the nation is the least ready, and do the kinds of things that our country would ask of its elite warriors. The Marines are smaller than the other major military services. They're more oriented on combat. Throughout history, at times, killing is necessary. The Marines run to the sound of the guns. Marines understand that what they do is a brutal business, but they never lose their humanity. They're the most ancient of all the armed services. I say ancient, not primitive. They're arguably the most functional of all the armed services. They're a cult that works. They're a gang that's lawful. To me, it's the baddest fraternity on the planet that, uh, that you can belong to. Semper Fidelis, always faithful. Marines, more than any service unit, emphasize that notion of camaraderie. A kind of specialness and a special camaraderie to each other. There's a myth out there that the Marines are Neanderthals. I actually find the Marines very intellectual. Roger that. Okay, Watts, I want Marines, I firmly believe, are idealists to their core, who really, truly believe that they can, in some way, help make the world a better place. They live in such a tough world that they have to cloak their idealism in a shell just to survive. The professional warrior has a very strong emphasis on a code of ethics. Integrity, morality is a big factor. Our core values, honor, courage, and commitment, that's the foundation of that ethos. Repeat after me. When we took that oath, we promised everybody in our country that for four years or for a lifetime, we'd give them the best we had. And we do every day. Marines don't argue about should we or should we not have intervened. Let's go. The mission is everything. And a Marine, no matter how many times you knock him down, he's going to get to his feet. And that probably makes us as feared as any organization in the world. We are the nation's first line of defense. But if you do something wrong to the country, we're the last people you want to see coming at your door. That reputation has been well earned over the last 230 years. I never started out to be a Marine. When I came aboard, I didn't really know what a Marine was. I found that I liked this stuff and, uh, and stuck around for about 35 years. I think it's important that the story be told. When I tell you to get out, you're going to get out quickly without getting injured, and you're going to get my yellow footprint. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Get out, get my yellow footprint. Recruits arrive at boot camp the same as generations of Marines before them. Let's go. Fast, fast. Let's go, let's go, let's go. At night, fast. on a bus. Let's go. Let's go, fast. Let's go! Faster! Let's go! Faster! Faster! Let's go! The journey of a thousand miles starts uh, when the drill instructor invites those recruits off the bus and puts them on the yellow footprints. And they symbolize you leaving the life as you knew it and entering the United States Marine Corps. Do you understand? Yes, sir! No! Do you understand? Yes, yes sir! In that first moment at boot camp, recruits literally step into the distinctive culture of the Marine Corps. These symbols and traditions and the values they represent are what bind Marines together and what set them apart. The Marines do maintain that distinctive culture. It's a commitment to others, uh, a sense that the organization comes before the self, a real downplaying of the individual and playing up the importance, the role, and the goals of the group. They can't help but fall into a formation when they stand on the yellow footprints, and it's kind of the first symbol of becoming part of a team. You will be what you're told to be. Your hair and eyes are straight to the front, and your mouth is shut. When they step on those yellow footprints, and when that bus departs our receiving barracks, It's an eerie experience. Uh, they know they're at boot camp and they're about to begin the toughest basic training in the Department of Defense. You need to remember what you didn't Far from elite warriors, 
recruits question their decision to join the Marine Corps. Many wonder if they'll survive the first night of boot camp, let alone the next 12 weeks of training. All those little details that people take for granted are stripped away, and it really makes a great impact on them. Move back and get your toes on the bottom of my step. Say aye, sir. Aye, sir. The main thing is they realize that the world as they knew it has changed. When someone asks you a question, you respond with yes, sir, or no, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And I remember interviewing recruits about their thoughts about that night, and it typically was, oh, my God, what have I done? Stop! Why the Marine tells you to stop? The Marine boot camp experience, Let's go, let's go. it's a real shock. And it really is off the deep end of the pool. We want the moms and dads to know that their son or daughter has arrived safely at Paris Island. No, when I tell you to pick up the boat, you're going to read Loud Adventures from line one. All the way down to line five. Do you understand? Yes, sir! We have a very short message that we uh, prepare and then we put next to the telephones. Pick up the phone right now. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. This is Recruit Marchuka. I've arrived safely in Paris Island. Please do not send me any food or bulky items in the mail. This is Recruit Loman. I have arrived safely in Paris Island. Please do not send any food or bulky items to me in the mail. I will contact you in three to five days by postcard with my new address. This is Recruit Casey. I've arrived safely in Paris Island. The phone call is going to be short. It may come late at night, and it may seem abrupt to them. I will contact you in three to five days by postcard with my new address. Just by postcard with my new address. Thank you for your support. Goodbye for now. That's it. It won't be no, I miss you, I love you, please save me, none of that stuff. Stop! I said stand right there, face that way. Shift to your right, say aye, sir. Aye, sir. You get right next to him. You get behind him, say aye, sir. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. But it's just part of that transition uh, from uh, civilian to uh, to recruit. We get them here, and we process them, and we get them ready for the training company. Go, 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 Where they're going to spend three months. For some recruits, it really comes like a shock. I joined the Marine Corps as a teenager in 1942. We got off that bus and we went inside. Uh, my whole life was changed. It was tough. There, there were some sore muscles in boot camp and uh, maybe a bruise or two. I watched the transformation of myself and others. Tighten up my line, man. We really tried hard to become Marines. Once he move, you move. And to live up to the expectations of the older Marines, the ones that had gone before us. I enlisted in the Marine Corps the 9th of September, 1942. Oh, I think it's indelible till the day you die. It's the most degrading day you'll ever have in your life. And I think it's all part of that vast plan, which none of us understood, to reduce us all to nothing and then build Marines. Did you speak to you? Did you speak to a live person? Yes, sir. Who'd you speak to? Don't look at me till the kid down that ball straight to the front. Who'd you speak to? My mom, sir. This recruit's mother, say it. This recruit's mother, Who'd sir. Who'd you speak to? My father, sir. My father or this recruit's father? This recruit's father. Who? This recruit could not contact anyone. Get on the phone again. Who'd you speak to? This recruit's father, sir. Who? This recruit's father. Who? This recruit's mother, sir. It was a terrible day. And that's over 60 years ago, and I could almost tell you every move we made. In a matter of less than 12 hours, everything what they knew for 18 or more years is suddenly gone and stripped away. We take these individuals off the street. We got to get their attention. We got to build discipline into them. We got to get them functioning as a team. That's all part of that ingraining transformation that has to take place from a city and off the street into the training process, the end result being a basically qualified Marine. I don't know how you grow that, but we seem to do it very well. The Marine Corps has two basic missions, to make Marines and to win battles. Our job is to uh, fight the nation's battles. It's as simple as that. We're warriors, uh, that's what we do. The job of the Marines is to get there first, ready to fight and ready to kill if necessary. We pride ourselves on mission accomplishment. Uh, we'll pick up, move out, draw fire, shape the battlefield, plant a flag. The Marine Corps is the smallest of the four services. It is designed to be the tip of the military spear, deployed first and quickly. The Marines run to the sound of the guns. 
It's counterintuitive in terms of a survival instinct um, when, you, when you actually experience it, but that's what the Marines do. The Marines embrace an aggressive warrior ethos that they feel sets them apart. I don't know whether it's specifically set up that way or it's just evolved out, is they, they definitely have an identity of we are Marines and it is distinct and different. Being a Marine isn't just a job. It's, it's, it's not a profession even. It's, it's more a vocation. It's a state of mind. The Marine Corps trains more than 30,000 new recruits each year at two basic training facilities in California and South Carolina. Paris Island, uh, because of its history and its association with the Marine Corps, is very often shrouded in a lot of mystery and mystique and lore and, and legend. It's one of the most remote parts of the East Coast. It's just a long swamp. Here is where the transformation begins. Recruits are shaped by the values of the Marine Corps. They take the Marine culture with them for the rest of their military career, and for many, the rest of their lives. Marine boot camp teaches very little in the way of genuine combat skills. Marine boot camp is about cultural immersion, indoctrination, and it does it extremely well. You come in, you're part of a team. Yes, sir. This is your family now. You learn how to take care of each other. You have to trust the guy on your left and the guy on your right. You build upon the recognition that you fight as a team. If you come together as a team and you look after one another, you will be successful. I think that's the essence of what the Marines are about, is creating that bond and saying that that's the most important thing about being a Marine, is taking care of each other. The Marine Corps is the youngest service among America's military organizations. 60% of Marines are younger than 25. 16% are teenagers. There are a number of reasons why a young person joins the Corps these days. They see an organization that's elite in their minds. They're looking for a challenge. And they affiliate the Marine Corps with an organization that embraces a challenge. I think the most important factor is a sense to serve his or her country. Uh, I believe these youngsters uh, have inside them an intense sense of patriotism. The idea that service above and beyond self is a worthy endeavor. You will be changed forever. Look at the Marine recruiting commercials. A man being knighted in a church or a castle. A guy on a horseback slaying a dragon. A mountain climber you know, reaching over the precipice. Uh, I mean, they definitely play up that image. In all the world, we have a central message. There are a select few. We want kids to realize that there's something special about the Marine Corps. Incredible transformation. We focus on kind of the, the, the image of the Marine Corps being the elite warrior, the smart, tough elite warrior that is the epitome of military virtue. Um, and then we show them that there's a process. Under the most grueling conditions, they are shaped. And for the kids and, and parents or anybody that sees the commercial, they see a process over time. An individual goes through a series of challenges and then eventually is transformed into this Marine. The view, the proud, the Marines. And it's an iconic view or a, a metaphor of boot camp, but the kids get it. Right now, we're at Leatherneck Square. This is where recruits come to get their Marine Corps martial arts training, and they get to run various obstacles. The objective is to bring a level of confidence out in the recruits that they themselves didn't know that they had. They hesitate and second-guess themselves, but once they're put to it and they have no choice but to do it, they surprise themselves. With the slide for life, the water alone is intimidating for the recruits because nobody wants to get wet and go for a swim. But also, the heights play a big role, too. As long as they rely on their training and the technique that was instructed to them, 
they'll have no problem doing it. Hey, stop, there is. Aye, sir. Roll over, three. Aye, sir. Stop. Stop. Yeah. We simply do not let them quit. When they want to quit or they think that they cannot go any longer, we let them know and we show them that they can push past those boundaries and come out on top with the mission accomplished. Kick your left leg down. No. Kick your left leg down to get momentum to get on top of the rope. Marine Corps boot camp is longer and more demanding than basic training of other services. The Marines have resisted a trend towards softening basic training as a way of attracting recruits, sticking instead to an approach it feels has worked for decades. The Marine Corps has made efforts to control excesses and brutal training methods that are a legendary aspect of boot camp. In the mid-1970s, hundreds of drill instructors were punished for abusing recruits. Changes were made, including monitoring DI's training methods. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. But most changes were subtle enough not to diminish the fundamental toughness of Marine Corps boot camp. There is a debate among Marines, with some holding on to the idea that the harsher practices of the past made better Marines. The challenge for the Marine Corps is finding the balance between abusive methods and the need to train an elite fighting force disciplined to fight and die on command. Hey, are we gonna maybe all body weapon, panel field, turkey pig? I don't know. Sound about right? Yes, sir. Now nah, you're dead, Blake. The drill instructors are the central figures here at Paris Island and uh, the principal uh, influence on the lives of the recruits. There is a drill instructor with the recruits seven days a week, 24 hours a day. The drill instructors are truly icons. They embody the very best of our core. You're not telling the tree now. There you go, boss. They teach, they train, they mentor, Take a knee. Awesome. and they lead with a passion that is almost an obsession. Our mission is to train these recruits. The only way to train them is to instruct them in, in different aspects, dealing with the Marine Corps and becoming a basic Marine. Son, whoa, you're gonna hurt yourself. Grab here, grab here, hit it, come across. So without thorough instruction and remediation, there would be no Marine. It would just be somebody stressed out all the time, not knowing what's going on. Boot camp is full of details about becoming a Marine. But mostly, it brings into focus for recruits the warrior ethos of the Marine Corps. We start off with every Marine's a rifleman. I don't care if it's a female Marine, a male Marine, a cook, baker, candlestick maker, whatever, everybody is a basic rifleman in the Marine Corps. Everyone must qualify with a service rifle. Because every Marine is a rifleman, the rifle range is the most important uh, training that we give the recruits while at boot camp. This is an outdoor classroom. We're teaching them the art of marksmanship. Our philosophy out here is no stress with the recruits. Hang okay, guys, you can get it. Same thing with you, recruit. This thing extended all the way out. Every one of these recruits when they're down here are going to have lots of individual instruction taught by the coaches. Forward hand extended all the way out. We find that it produces a better result than if we have that one-on-one -on -one time. Get left dog target. That's you, 27. Left dog target. It's all about teaching and getting that young person to be able to operate the weapon in the way that we want them to and also hit the target. And that shows how much emphasis we put on marksmanship. The teaching at the rifle range also has a larger meaning. It sets a tone, reinforced throughout boot camp, that Marines pass on knowledge and that they are connected to their history and to those who came before them. We teach them history and traditions of the Marine Corps. So they understand what it's like to be a Marine. They understand what it was like to be a Marine 100 years ago. I don't think you can teach it didactically. It doesn't happen at a chalkboard. 
it's the culture, again, and the transmission of the culture's values from one generation to the next. They understand that they cannot allow those who have gone before to be let down. They know they can never let that legacy die. That's why history is so important. It's, it's part of our ethos. It's part of who we are. Turn around. In 1999, the Marine Corps integrated a new component into its training for all officers and enlisted personnel. Don't get used to this right here. If you do this the Marine Corps martial arts program is designed to improve individual war fighting skills and train all Marines to be one-on-one -on -one warriors. The idea for McMap can be traced to the end of the Vietnam War and a concern the Marines had gotten away from individual combat skills and training. Get back, sir. Get back! Drop it! Drop it! We teach the entire spectrum of violence. Anything could be a weapon of opportunity. On a battlefield, it could be a helmet. If you're going to go to the battle with this, with this um, skill, it's usually going to be to kill someone. Grab my other hand here and choke them out by just pulling up real hard. The physical disciplines within the martial arts are different than what most people perceive of civ civilian martial arts. A lot of the perception is what they see in modern media, movies and TV. Most of that is myth and special effects. McMap combines the most effective martial arts techniques from around the world into a single program. Some of the training techniques were developed at the International Hoplology Society, a group that studies why and how different cultures engage in combat. We're setting up a program of training that teaches them to use the weapons they have at hand in a very simple set of patterns. The primary emphasis is behavior, combative behavior, okay? Can you function in a lethal environment? The stress is part and parcel of that. That's why these are live blades. Risk has to be involved in the training. It has to be as close to reality on the battlefield as possible. If you've dealt with it in a training situation, you are better prepared to deal with it on, on the battlefield situation. It's all about training behavior. What we're looking for is, can you stay cool, calm, professional, do your job, which in this case is closing with dominating or killing the enemy, while you're under tremendous pressure. Training in technique is not nearly as important as training in behavior. The ability to move in on somebody who's trying to thrust a sharp, pointy object into your body is a behavioral thing far more than it is a technical thing. He begins to retreat. He surrenders and he retreats. In dealing with people in combat, you're primarily talking about nervous systems. You can change the technology all you want. The human nervous system is still the same. It's still going to react the same way to the high stress levels of lethal combat. To deal with the stress of the battlefield, the Marine Corps tempers the physical demands of martial arts training with character building lessons. You want every person that you train to be as good as you. I do believe it is the heart and soul of our war ethos. Rock, good job. Nice finishing touch. Our program, I believe, is uh, unlike any other because we have three disciplines. Hands, hands. We have the physical discipline, which is probably the sexiest. Guys just love going out there and rolling around, throwing punches and fighting and stuff like that. That's why we joined the Marine Corps. Stay down. There's 182 techniques in five different belt levels. Turn around. Give don't me your shoot, money. Don't shoot. We also have the mental piece, which is studying the other cultures that are warriors, the Spartans, the, the Zulus, the Apaches, and all the other cultures that have a warrior mindset. And then the part that I think I enjoy the most about this program is the character piece. It's about teaching Marines the difference between right and wrong, about doing the right thing 24-7. The Marine Corps has been making a concerted effort at developing character. Target! Target! Even to the point in training close combat skills, they do not separate those two things. Integrity is part of close combat skills. Target right, target right! Yes! Shoot! 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 It is an aspect of the warrior culture. Part of your identity as a warrior is being a man of integrity, a man of ethics. The Spartans had a saying that 
the purposes of drills and exercises is less to strengthen the back than it is to toughen the mind. The physical training and the hard discipline allows them to be harder mentally and allows them to have that confidence. So they go hand in hand. Marine warrior ethos has been around since the very beginning. The Marine Corps has a generally positive image and reputation, both in this country and around the world. Marines are fond of one of their own general's description, that there is no better friend, no worse enemy than a United States Marine. But on occasion, the image has been tarnished, often because of the Marines' aggressive tradition and tactics. Marines bring their own warrior ethos of uncompromising toughness to the battlefield, often producing brutal confrontations and severe results. You're asking people for a level of perfection inside a maelstrom of confusion that has to be experienced to be believed. The Marines do a great job, but they need to be better at it even. 99% is not good enough. Marine Corps is saying, you know, you have an ideal. There is a code and a level of potential that all Marines should be striving for. By far, most of them don't get to the ideal, but they get closer to their potential, I think, than, than most people give them credit for. Order is about monopolizing the use of force. You can't have freedom, democracy, etc., until somebody monopolizes the use of force um, and stems a region from anarchy. And for that, you're going to need people like United States Marines, um, who do have a very strong moral sensibility as they use force. It very much comes down to the training. And the more you train and the more you view it as a professional army that's not about just killing the enemy out of vengeance, the better you are at having an organized troop that's responsible, accountable, and that carries out the mission with just conduct. So you have to have discipline. You have to have a young Marine that understands right and wrong, that understands that killing isn't natural. The fact that we have a code of conduct, a Western ethic that says, quite frankly, don't kill nothing that don't need killing. Marines understand that what they do is a brutal business, but they never lose their humanity. So much of the Marine Corps training doesn't necessarily play well in the public eye, because people don't really like to know what the Marine Corps is training to do, what the Marine Corps' job is. We do teach them to quickly locate, close with, and destroy the enemy. The Marine generals are the only generals who actually talk about killing. They will say, this organization is about killing. That's what we do. Here's the dilemma. A liberal society still needs to be defended. And it needs to be defended violently at times. And the people who are going to do this have to like what they do, or else they're not going to be very good at it. It's not really going to matter if it goes up to higher. They may morally, abstractly, not like to kill. But the actual training and doing is not something that they can be afraid of. The fact of the matter is, throughout history, at times, killing is necessary. It's not a matter of good or bad. There are situations in which this hard thing has to be done. I think one of the problems a military organization has is it tends to follow the social whims of society around it. Killing is bad. It's unnatural to kill. You shouldn't kill. And then you're saying, OK, go be a Marine, go kill somebody, and then come back. It's bad to kill. And frequently, when people see the unvarnished truth, they don't like it. I ran into this all the time when I got out of the Marines and people would ask about my experience. They didn't really want to know what we did. In some ways, Marines on the battlefield have more in common with their enemy than they do with their family and friends at home. There's a sense that letting down your armor a little bit is an admission of weakness. So the culture is also a culture of enormous toughness. We can do things better. And we have a kind of, uh, if not invincibility, a kind of durability and resilience. The killing carries a cost to the person who carries it out. The combat changes people. The combat, I think, diminishes the soul. Uh, permanently. It alters people. The sacrifices the Marines make are not just physical, they're mental and spiritual as well, and they're carried for the rest of one's life. I think anyone who served in the armed forces, overseas in combat,
comes back with something that he would rather not talk about. I'll never forget a World War II Tarawa veteran who told me that he was proud he served his country, but he wasn't proud of what he had to do to serve his country. It's my personal belief that Marines, more than anyone else in society, absolutely hate warfare. We hate combat. No one likes it. And thank God some of us survived it. Today's Marine Corps emblem ceremony officially recognizes the transformation of your recruit into a United States Marine. They've been here almost the entire 12 weeks to accomplish uh, graduating uh, recruit training. We have the family members all come in. We have the recruits out in formation. It's very symbolic. They stand before you today fully prepared to receive the coveted emblem of the Marine Corps, the Eagle, Glow, and Anchor. The Eagle Globe and Anchor is the cherished emblem of our Corps. It is presented to each recruit the day before graduation by his or her drill instructor. It is the moment in time where they transition from being a recruit to being a United States Marine. One of the things imparted at Paris Island is an absolute trust in each other, that teamwork. That you've got to rely on each other. And to know that no matter what happens, even if you pay the ultimate sacrifice and you die, that you'll be never left behind. We fight for our brothers. We fight for the Corps. We fight for the members of our squad and platoon. Take care of your buddies, and you better hope your buddy's taking care of you. And he always is. That's the way Marines are. The individual Marine, the individual warriors at the fire team and the squad level, they've always been the heroes. They've always been the ones to locate and close with the enemies of our country. That's no different today than when it was 230 years ago. Marine Corps draws from the American citizenry. And there's a tendency these days to put the military up on a shelf and say, it's not us, it's them. It's those people over there. I would like people to realize that when they're looking at footage of a squad of Marines walking down a street in Fallujah or a body bag coming off a helicopter, that could be their son, their neighbor. It could be the kid down the street. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We're just the kids next door that have joined the military that have a calling we feel that service to the nation is, is the highest calling a person can have. Yes, sir! We do not promise any individual who comes into the Marine Corps anything except maybe if you're good enough, you can become a Marine. You can join this long line of warriors and heroes that the Marine Corps has had. The spirit of Semper Fidelis is something that lives in a man's heart. It never goes away. The brotherhood, the camaraderie, all of that is real. And in our homogenized 21st century life, I mean, it's easy to forget. What continues to inspire me is uh, Marines believe in something larger than themselves. Yes, sir, sir, get up, get up and go! Sacrifice, but a willful sacrifice. That's something that not everyone understands. It's a hard time, some hardship, but you do with your heart. You have to be unselfish to go on harm's way and leave loved ones behind. It's hard to sum it all up. The major thing is a sense of pride, a sense of belonging. The Marine Corps is a band of brothers. There's nobody else out in the world that knows what it feels like to be a Marine other than Marines themselves. It's a sense of belonging. Honor, courage, commitment, our core values sum it all up.